<laughs> I'll just go live right now. Because I still have eggs to get tonight. <laughs> you know, you gotta cook that, that dragon egg uh, sandwich in the morning, Rick. Come on. Okay, I have a couple more gems to get in this area. I heard it's spiralicious. Okay. Okay, Spile, uh keep your cool. Also, oh, that's that uh that scarf is old fashioned. Old fashioned Rick or West. He's wearing a blanket. Oh, okay. I haven't seen blankets that small in a while. I've always wearing the big heavy blankets, so that's my problem. I have a lot of small blankets around here. And now. And hello, Chash. Yes, hello, we Chat. Have... We have Blaze Guys, Dracon, Ezra. Urbez, Frederick, Caspis, Cassie PS, uh, and another viewer. Another TV viewer. Okay. Okay, let's see. Where else do we go? 134 eggs. Directly that way. Doesn't seem to be any way this direction. Probably up there in that castle. Ah, there's Miller. How's it going, Miller? Hello. Hello. You gonna join in the blanky fun? Oh, I see. <laughs> Oh, and there's Jonas too. Okay, there, hello, Jonas. There's Jonas. Uh, I was making a pizza and had Jonas' stream on in the background. Yeah, wasn't it good? We were, we were. I was trying like. Well, now let's not mention what I was trying. <laughs> you were you were drawing some Haven Celestia and then some Rescuers Down Under. That's what you were drawing. Yeah. Rescuers Down Under, eh? Yeah. That's just the right amount of detail. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure why I didn't watch that much, but it, it's, it was my cup of tea, though. I guess that's because I only had Nymph back then. I saw that before I saw the actual um, 73 Rescuers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same here. Um, no, I watched Rescuers Down Under a lot of times as a kid. Uh, nice. I did not watch Nim until, like, last year. So, oh, look at Rick. Now, a nice little shawl there. It's a, it's a bold choice. <laughs> yes, I should just finally become our old babushka. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I should warn that I have, like, one neuron left, and it's kind of, it's, it's, it's flickering like one of those, like, like motel lights, you know, um. So, uh, my commentary may not be very sophisticated tonight. Let me get in the chat so I can see what people are saying. Just Boxer says, I've been meaning to invest in small blankets. Using a, a comforter while sitting in a desk chair is not practical. 
That seems like a bit much. Yeah, I've got uh, cause my computer is set up basically in my living room, and I've got a couple of blankets that usually sit on the couch, and they have been. Uh, I've been holding them very close to me over the last couple of days. It's nice. been getting pretty cold in Texas. I have an adequate bathrobe. Just rocking that Arthur Dent look, pretty much. <laughs> I'm very ready for spring at this point. I, I absolutely, like, I'm done with cold. Spring is never coming. Shut up. <laughs> you, you know the, the, ground, the groundhog? Does a shadow, or shadow appear or not appear? Right. Well, we are in uh, current year result, which is the groundhog dies day before his prediction. Awesome. Does so that mean there's going to be like... He's going to see nor, or not see his shadow. Does that mean there's going to be like a Groundhog Day loop? Like, is it just... <laughs> Something like that. Are we gonna are we gonna wake up every morning with Sonny and Cher playing on the radio? You've seen Groundhog Day, right? Yes, I know what Groundhog Day is. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not sure. I mean, you're young. Well, and... okay. Let me let me specify. I know what it is. I have not seen it. Oh, you haven't seen it. Okay. You should see it. It yeah. You should at some point. It's 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 cute. It's it's very nineties, but it's I cute. like Bill Murray, so it's like. <laughs> kind of surprised I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh. All I know is I remember somebody being like, yeah, he didn't know how to play the piano before, and then he played this, like, one concerta, and, like, that usually takes people years to practice. So he literally yeah. spent eight hours a day practicing the piano for years in this yeah. time loop. There's, like, articles that speculate on how long he was in the loop, and... There's, I think there's some theories that was like thousands of years. Yeah. I think a lot more than another. I think it was like uh, in the earliest draft, uh, they like specified that he was in the loop for at least like 12,000 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would be yeah. utterly insane after that. It just makes me think of all the other like loop stories that I can think of that have that sort of same premise and how short they are. Like, there was the Star Wars episode, or Star Wars, Star Trek episode, where they were in a time loop. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But they, what did they say? It happened, like, that seven, was like season two. 15 times or something. Like, it was very short, actually. I don't remember. All I remember is, like, it, like, the Enterprise just kept blowing up. That was, that's all I remember that episode. Yeah, and I mean, like, that, oh, that and was the, what got people into the episode, is the episode and, starts and the Enterprise blows up, and they're just like... How the hell are they going to dig themselves out of this one? Yeah. There were, there were one or two like that. There was there was the one... There was the blow, the, the time loop blowing up. There was the one that was like... There were two Picards and one of them was crazy. Um, then there was the one where time was like zizzing back and forth. Remember that? Um, the yeah, one from- where... They were on the shuttlecraft, and Troy went to go like sit down at the table, yeah. and then there was a bowl of fruit that had like rotten in the yeah, got rotten minute. And yes, I got, Picard got like a like a time manicure, and his nails got long. And um, yeah, that was uh, I remember now. That's awesome. I was like, wow, wow, wow. The uh, oh my god, no, no. I my favorite timey wimey sort of one was the Deep Space Nine episode where Miles O'Brien spent twenty years in a prison. In the span of a couple hours, through like neuro simulation, I don't remember that one. That episode was fucked up. <laughs> well, well, that episode was nine episode. I mean, yeah, yeah, that you was know. the episode that Miles literally took a phaser to his own head and was about to pull the trigger, Aww. and they had to talk him down. And it was just like, holy shit. Sad. I think Voyager like also did a time loop. Oh yeah, there was, and that one ha- that had literally a time doomsday device in it. That's right. They had the 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 um the the multi part one where the bad guys just beat the shit out of Voyager, and they all and they had like time weapons, mm-hmm. and it had uh, Clarence Bodic in it um, from RoboCop. <laughs> Ah, it's good to be a nerd. It says, man, Miles went through a lot in that series. Uh, yeah. Yeah, didn't he get killed, like, like three or four times? <laughs> or something? 
He watched his daughter die in front of him a couple times. And then like Keiko got possessed by one of the one of the um evil god things. And like everybody in that show Excuse you, it's called a pa wraith. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so like I feel like the weirdest <laughs> thing that happened to Miles not like the worst thing, but the weirdest thing that happened to Miles was that he kept time jaunting, and uh, he like jumped like some hours into the future, and then he died, and his future self replaced him. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, where it was just like, and this is technically not the Miles that has existed in this universe, but we're gonna just pretend it was for the rest of time. Yeah. Didn't that happen with Harry Kim also? Like, there was two of them and the original one. Oh, uh, Harry Kim barely even counts. Like, <laughs> so much bullshit happens to him. It's like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, you, you you must remember the one where, like, Tom Paris and Captain Janeway turned into, like, like newts or whatever. Like, oh yeah, they de-evolved into lizards. The like, infamously he, worst episode of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, like he he broke the warp ten barrier, which makes no sense, and like came back like slowly disintegrating. Like it's, he was just flaking apart, and then like he just like turned into a big mess. And he died. Then he came back to life, and then he turned into a lizard, and then so did Captain Janeway. Yeah, and then they had like lizard babies. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. that. That yeah, I've never watched Voyager. Best. I'm, uh, I'm good. <laughs> I've watched some Voyager. Voyager <laughs> like, we need to have an episode list of, like, what specifically to watch. Cause... Well, I know the first episode of Voyager that I ever watched was The Thaw, which, uh, set my expectations too high, because it's a very good episode. Was that the one with, um, like, Amelia Earhart? Or... No, not that okay. one. That one was no. the... 37s, I think. Oh, okay. The Thaw okay. was the one with the uh, evil clown. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was some. And everybody agrees. Everybody loves Tom Paris on Voyager. Such an average pilot. Uh, uh, well, uh, but he's a nice pilot, but he's so average. People just like how he sings along with, with life. Um, probably one of my favorite Voyager characters was the Doctor. Um... Or ends in Harry Kim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harry was an ensign for seven years. That sucks. <laughs> and he died a lot in the show too. He did. He was he was like a he the was like red the, shirt. Yeah, the re recyclable red shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're jerks. <laughs> it seems I like to know how. Here he is, Voyager's lone innocent. He's a glorified administrator who never moves up in rank as there supposedly isn't any room, but he's eventually put in charge of Night Shift. Over time, he becomes more ambitious, bucking for a promotion, and occasionally staying up for his friend Tom. Ah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I like I like the Doctor. I love that thing already. The, uh, the, the thing I always think of with the Doctor, because again, again, a lot of this stuff is osmosis through, like, internet culture and memes and stuff. So every time I think of the Doctor, I just think of a tiny Robert Picardo. <laughs> Man. Like eight inches tall. He was amazing. <laughs> I love I loved Robert Picardo with Voyager. He couldn't... Uh, it was very difficult to tell him when he was being sarcastic sometimes, but at this... he Because the way he's... Uh, I should say his... His uh, mean demeanor was on the show. You could... It, uh, it was hilarious. I loved it. Nice. Even if he was happy, mad, or something, he always had the same tone. <laughs> oh, please. I'm a doctor. That would be Tom. And yes, that was one of his quotes. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Please take the nature of the had some bombs in this level.
And I was wondering where, uh, uh, when I finally played Star uh, Starcraft, where that quote, please state the nature of the medical emergency came from. Then my stepdad showed me Star Trek. And then I saw Voyager. And then everything fell in place. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Such a nerdy of a, thing. Of course it's a reference. Lizard? Coming up with something original? That's not the MO. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, when you, uh, you, if when you first played Blizzard game, you thought all these quotes were original. Then you realized, oh, wait a minute, they're all movie quotes. <laughs> yeah, even the Iron Chef is, one. Take take the most popular thing, make it slightly better. Mm. Yeah. And it was a thing that people back then uh, really loved. Honestly, yeah, no joke about that. It's just they did too much now. They're doing it way too much. You think so? Yeah. I mean, I, ha I can't I can't stress how many times they did the old uh, "Come with me, we want to live." Quote so many times now. You think they're Terminator fans or something? Can I do this? Uh. Just two hit points? I do not know. <laughs> I need explosives, but they don't get me any for this level. Lame. He's got a bum rush. He's got to be the crazy monkey. He's got to be the crazy monkey. Look, aren't we all the crazy monkey at some point? I mean, what else is a human baby than a crazy monkey? You're not wrong. You're not Can't rush into the room because there's more ninjas on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, whatever. And I can't move. That's great. Bum bum ba dum bum 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 boom. Captain Chamberjan quotes there are three things to remember about being a starship captain. Keep your shirt tucked in, go down the ship, and never abandon a member of your crew. Yeah. And never interact with yourself. It's just embarrassing. Keep your shirt tucked in. Is that something Picard uh, taught her? <laughs> There's also the Kirk rule, which is, you know, always obey the Prime Directive, except all the times that you don't when it's convenient. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would even happen on... Uh, next generation, happen where yeah, they happen were... A little bit more stringent about the cases where they're like, well, we have literally no other option. I think that happened on all the shows. At least once. Yeah. Well, because it's an interesting thing to sort of be like, where do you draw the line between your duty and what you know is right? <laughs> duty. And, yeah. I, I think for a TNG, it was like, we will not affect the prime directive except for the life and limb of our own people yeah which is like eh I, I can kind of see that what's the worst that could happen if we just completely poison their culture <laughs> I mean they did it in that one the uh who watches the watchers episode yeah where they went down to like the bronze age Romulans and uh, yeah. they told them about starships and stuff because at first they thought they were gods and then they're like no <clears throat> we're just very very advanced people and they're like oh okay and then the episode played it off like it was perfectly fine and there would be no long term effects next time they go there the whole planet's on fire <laughs> just all of it they, no they did not think that there would be no long term effects that was just postulated that Possibly, at that point, that was the least damage that they could do. <laughs> and that would be yeah. better than inventing a religion. <laughs> a Picard! Worship the Picard! The Picard has the ability to heal all, to bring the, the dead back to life. Yeah. Except then he explicitly showed them, no, I do not have the ability to do that here. 
watch as one of my crewmates dies in front of me and I am powerless to do anything about it. Wasn't there one where, like, they were up against, like, an alien that was impersonating a god and then, like... Uh, that happened several times. Gene Rod and yeah. that sort of thing. Well, there was one where, like, where, like she was she was pulling a lot of, like, con artist stuff and then, like... Oh, yeah, there was... Yeah, she kept making earthquakes and stuff. Right. And it turns and then, out it was just her ship in orbit had, like, a very powerful tractor beam. Right, so Picard had to demonstrate all the same uh, principles. Mm -hmm. God, it's been so long since I watched this stuff. Hey, so there's a secret hidden in this lady's eye that you want to know about it. What? Well, let's find out. Is oh, yeah, Federick's saying Federick saying there's a secret. Okay, what is it? <laughs> Hoisted by your own Picard. That's the secret. <laughs> Yeah, the idea of impersonating a god actually becomes more interesting when you have creatures like Q that are basically gods, and you're just like, well, now it becomes more likely that any of those claims could be real. Well, the, okay. Are the Q gods, though? Because... There was... The first I mean, one, you have to look up and shoot the switch. Do you care about Voyager? I, mean, I guess you have to define godhood, right? Okay, do you care about Voyager spoilers, Miller? No. Okay, so there is a two-parter with Q, um, where he like Janeway got caught up in a Q civil war. Okay, I don't Which, see like, any switch. It's in the first room. You look up and shoot a switch. Uh, uh, this is, is this like the first room. This is the first room of this leg of this challenge. Uh, I think you might. He says I'm on outside. the outside, oh. so the second room. <laughs> on the no outside switch. of the first room. Uh, what? He said, "Look, uh, you gotta look up and switch." All right, what's the level called? Let me find a video of it. There, there is no. Yeah, you Pretty think quick. it might have been in the other section? I've been playing this one for a while now, Frederick. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> oh, Frederick. Um. Uh, Anyway, you said there's a Q Civil War. Okay, so there is a Q Civil War, which took the form of, like, a literal Civil War. Like, Q, the, the Q continuum looked exactly like, you know, the Antebellum South. Right. Um, and it got weird, because Q got injured. You know, Q got injured, and, like, it looked like they were going to execute him. And, like, like... Well, there was like a lady Q who got stuck on Voyager without her powers somehow. Where are you running off to. And she told the crew, which was being captured by Chakotay um, during that episode, to fly directly into a supernova. And that put them in the Q continuum. They, y you never saw Voyager in, in inside the continuum. But like they apparently joined the battle like as as union soldiers and it was weird because they were using they were like pointing grabbing the q's guns and pointing the guns at them like muskets and stuff so i don't know what conclusions you can draw from that but it does sort of suggest that maybe they're not completely omnipotent like they were going to execute q mm -hmm. with you know guns um I don't know. Well, I think I think the idea is that representationally it would have been with guns, but of course, right? It was you know, there's some actual yeah. The, the, representationally, sort of they used the costume department of whatever they had at Paramount. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pragmatically, but, um, that's what it is. But I think even in universe, the idea is that it's like if they had it all at war, the universe would just stop existing. Yeah. And since they want to have something to rule over afterwards. They're gonna do a sort of mock battle, right? It's like the, uh, it's like what Gundam does, where it's just like, hey, each country gets to submit your giant fighting robot, and then yeah. the giant fighting robots fight each other. Whichever one wins, that country wins the war. It was you a don't weird... need to spend millions of lives and insurmountable amount of resources to fight. <laughs> it was a weird episode, and I think I remember like. Some people really didn't like it. 
Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um... Anyway. And you'll be hearing about in the next couple of weeks that they will be removing all copies of this episode from school libraries. <laughs> Sorry, is that too real? <laughs> it's fine, but the last two years have been too real. Ah, <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, 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 shit. Check out this just a little bit. All right, I'll call it. <laughs> like you can't phase me, but you know it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Now I got chat talking about G Gundam. Yeah, I had the very racist Mexican Gundam that was just like what? a door with like a sombrero, but yeah, as a giant robot. And then they had a colony, a space was... colony called New Mexico. Wow. Uh, I think that's already been taken. It was a giant sombrero. <laughs> it was a giant sombrero in space with, like, fake cactuses on it. Was this the 90s? Oh, it was, like, late 80s. Yeah, okay. Japan. Yeah. It was Japan. Japan has always been super racist. Oh, I mean... Like, they're worse than America, because they don't uh, well... allow the minorities to speak up about their issues. So it doesn't <sighs> seem as big of an issue. Um, how's everybody doing in the chat? <laughs> All right, I'll I'll calm down. No, it, it's it. Ah, <laughs> uh, good times. Um, <laughs> it's weird how it's an FPS now. I think it's a third person. It's just Rick's zoomed in really far, uh, or no, is it locked in first person? It's locked in first person. Oh. Can jump. I guess I just didn't want Weird. Spyro to be wielding a gun. Well, no, because you're the monkey. Right. No, I'm saying like the. Well, whatever. But, um. I think I've watched like all of one episode of Gundam. That's fair. Yeah, I have also not watched it. I don't think you understand how many things I've not watched, but I know about because I'm weird with the eclectic things I do research on. Right, you have like Osmos pop culture. Yeah. I know of a lot of stuff through memes. Like I don't really know a lot about them, but I but I have like, like I'll see the meme and then I'll go to the know your meme and I'll get like the the most basic sketch of like whatever context there is to this, you know. Jojo thing or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh. Shoot him, I guess. That that didn't make any sense. <laughs> This, and this is why we have the Can You Pet the Dog account. When shooting is the only way you can interact with things, the game very quickly stops making sense. Yeah. If you see a dog that's limping along and you want to give it help, but the only mechanic you have in the game to interact with things is to shoot it, it paints a very bad picture. Anyway. We are 100% for that. 109% for Midnight Mountain, somehow. Even though there's still 10 more gems to get. I guess it might be the bone of the like, secrets that Federer was talking about. They might count for that extra percent. I have to make a small correction on this short dead of sticks. <laughs> Oh. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Is it that, uh... The picture's a little too of the human persuasion? 
No, no, Carrie. no. It's no, it's, okay. No, no. Carrie had a correction. <sighs> oh, interesting. <laughs> that fox with the eagle eye. Uh, anyway. Do, do, do. So Phil, there we go. Is he more fox or hyena? Yes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Do, 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 do. Let's see. One hundred and eleven percent. Okay. okay. There is one more thing I need to get at Dino Mines, but also there is a sticks, uh, not sticks, sparks. Sorry. <laughs> sparks. Confusing me. Sparks <laughs> level. Where is the sparks level? And over here. The, the beginning. <laughs> Federick says, a what? Subtitle said nut sticks. I don't even... <laughs> I don't know where I got the word nut. <laughs> and not. Yeah, not sticks. So outside of the sort of main big series, TOS, TNG, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, mm -hmm. is there any Star Trek content you would suggest that like you've enjoyed? Uh, well, um, go to Rick GC. Okay, Star Trek content I recommend definitely TNG. But let's see here. Well, I'm saying besides those main series, okay, besides, besides the movies associated with them. So like. Uh, Okay, yes, actually, I have well, mostly video game related, but let me take a look here. <laughs> uh, okay, so the Super Nintendo, the next generation, was pretty sweet, and so was uh, Star Trek Academy for the, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, you don't see much about those already, but Star Trek, uh, Star Trek uh, Academy was pretty good for a first-person uh, simulation starship game for a Super Nintendo game. It was like Star Trek, or Star Fox, sorry. Except you're flying a whole crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see, what else? There was this, um, I didn't know about this, but there was a, a um, how is it? How should it, like, uh, you remember those video games where it's just nothing but movie cinematics and you're playing through with them? FMV uh, game? FMV yes. Game, yeah. Hmm. Okay, they had, uh... They had a they lot had... of those for Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. There was one I for... I there was a Klingon one that people recommend very often. There was one where, uh, you played as, uh, on the Voyager set with Q, and basically you... Uh, Q's guiding you through the game while you're playing it. But the problem is, you're trying to figure out, is he doing this to help you, or is he doing this to kill you? Let's see, what was it called? I find the name of it. Oh yes, it was just called Star Trek Borg. That was it. Okay. Jonas, did you have something you want to answer with? Uh, I'm thinking. So we're talking not the series, none of the series, none of the movies, uh, like comics, um, uh, and stuff like that. But comics, video games, RPG modules, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, One something like game. that, I guess. Just like something that sort of left a strong impression on you and like made you enjoy Star Trek more because of it. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, you can't do it anymore, but the Star Trek experience in Vegas was pretty cute. They, um, they pretty much built an entire slice of the promenade, 
uh, including like including like a, kind of a simple version of Quark's Bar, where you could where you could you know get drinks and food and stuff. Um, and um, it was cool. It was really it was it was it was they they put a lot of money into it, and uh, it was uh, it was pretty well done. And you had like you know like, like Klingon cast members, you know, just just like coming out and not breaking character and just being completely Klingon at you. Um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And they had they had stuff from the episodes, you know, memorabilia, things like that. Um, and I think I think it closed like in the two thousands, maybe a little later than that. Um, that was uh, that was a pretty cool thing. There's probably like there's probably like footage of it on YouTube, I'm sure. Um, what else? I didn't play a lot of Star Trek video games. I know there were some early ones, like... The technical manual was interesting. Um, it was TNG era. I think it was actually done by, like, Denise and Mike Okuda, who worked on the, uh, who worked on the show. And it was kind of early, early in terms of continuity, so not probably not everything in there is still canon, but, like, they mapped out a lot of like like it showed all the different things and all the different decks that you never saw you know like the bowling alley and the you know the um the movie theater and the so, and so on and so forth and like oh, yeah. you know all Is the that all the we first got cetacean ops probably yeah i don't remember all the details but like but yeah um my friend jeff had it and i thought it was like really cool that like they put that much thought into it um but yeah they actually like extensively mapped out the the enterprise d and like, you know, had stuff on every like, like like they actually worked out what was on every deck and stuff like that, and like you know, like to a limited extent how it all worked technically. Um, it was it was neat. It's probably out of print now. I don't know if you'd be able to get it anywhere, but like eBay maybe. But it was cool. Um, <laughs> my aunt got me Neelix's cookbook. Um, that was amusing. I don't know. It was really enriching. <laughs> A lot of the uh, Star Trek recipes were basically just like stuff, you know, existing recipes with, uh, you know, different names. You know, Heart of, Heart of Targ was like, you know, like, like pork chops or something. <laughs> I had to find it, but there's one more. Oh, sorry. I didn't find it. No, that, that's it, basically. I don't have a whole lot to add there, to that. There's one more game I realized uh, that I know everyone's talking about Star Trek Online. Star Trek Online is pretty cool, but it, it feels too scripted. But there's one more game that I just remembered that I really liked growing up uh, for PC, Star Trek Armada. I wonder if anybody ever remembers that one. Uh, Vaguely, kind of, sort of. It's like it's like um, how should I put it? It's like Star uh, Starcraft, but it's basically nothing but ships fighting each other and, and a real time strategy game. And all you're doing is basically going out and you're trying to build a uh, build a fleet to take on the other armies but what made the game so awesome huh? uh, is that this game could allow you to put like a hundred ships on screen at once and like it was hilarious seeing like 50 enterprise ships blow up an ore cube and uh <laughs> with the detail problem is though then I realized when I started learning about computers why was this game crashing so much your computer can't handle so much things at once GC <laughs> I'm saying, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Now I see the problem with this game. But yeah, the game would crash so much when you have too many ships on on screen at once. They had no ship limit, and that was the problem with the game. But it was fun, very fun. Ships, uh, seeing all the uh, beams going across the screen, taking uh, over star bases, fighting the board, creating lines, and just seeing a whole bunch of ship action being controlled at your fingertips. It was fun. Oh, and of course, taking over people's ships with your crew, and taking them over, for, uh, taking the Klingon ship, bringing it to Federation, being the Borg, doing the same to the other people, blah, blah, blah. It was hilarious. Hmm. I'm surprised they've never tried to do, like, a sort of Mass Effect styled Star Trek game where it, it is just a linear RPG. I 
I, I, I don't know. I, I've never been super into the teen, into the Star Trek games. Yeah, Federick's probably right. If the dragon level was like this instead of the regening, <laughs> so where mm -hmm. you had the segments of the dragon and then it would split into multiple dragons. Let us not speak no. of the dragon level. Yes, let's not. <laughs> I think Rick wants to move on from that that little ride. Oh, I actually Lord. still got Star Trek Armada. Well, <laughs> I feel like you should put it in. I'm just, I'm just gonna camp out here. This seems like a safer option. Yeah. I read the reviews about Star Trek Armada was amazing. If only people didn't, uh, people's computers didn't crash with so many ships out at once. Oh. <laughs> mm. uh, I think that was the problem with the game. It was too ambitious. It was very ambitious, and they didn't realize that people couldn't handle the, machi the game back then. Mm. You gotta have very efficient systems. Yeah. yeah. You need like a Pentium chip. Mm -hmm. Well, no. <laughs> I don't, it, it's not always about the hardware. Like, that's what I'm trying to do with the Haven Celestia stuff. 99% of the work I'm doing is just making it so everything's optimized enough that uh, even with, you know, a whole arc ship full of people, it's not going to slow down. <laughs> you could have 16 players playing this game, and, and like I say, if you could have 16 players making like 50 ships at the same time... <laughs> Uh, that would be like what? Let's see. That'd be like uh, oh, jeez, uh, eight hundred, eight hundred chips. Yeah, eight hundred chips in a in a in a real time strategy game, shooting lasers all over the place like Star Trek. <laughs> oh, Simon says the TNG technical manual is still in print. How about that? <laughs> uh, it was actually, if I remember correctly, Dracon. It was for Windows XP. Uh, but it could play all the way up to Windows 10. Nice. Because that's what I remember getting it, too, I, when Windows XP was pretty much obsolete. Hmm. <laughs> Ow. I was playing the game for an amazing story, though. It was pretty much a rehash of everything that went off in Star Trek. Oh, jeez. The car became the cutest again. Again? Yeah, again. Eh, not again. <laughs> Always getting assimilated. <laughs> of course, if I remember correctly, this one had a twist. The car had to fight Locutus. Well, was it like a time travel thing or something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Borg, identify yourself. I am you, but better. <laughs> well, I see we're doing one of those kinds of episodes. Mr. Wolf, raise the shields. Fire the phases. <laughs> The uh, the budget upgrade to the Borg was kind of interesting. Like in the in the early episodes, they just had like stuff stuck onto them, and then just the like the white face paint. And then like in later ones, it gets they get all like gross and like infected looking with the the veins and like stuff like 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 embedded in their faces. It was good. Yeah, they're like cyber zombies. Pretty much, yeah. There's one obviously easily missable gem in this one. I don't know if we need it. <laughs> That's fair. <clears throat> Uh, 
Oh, so Sparks is actually pointing at something this time. I'm not putting in anything. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué Babushka West is confuzzled. Why you get me dead radishes? Babushka says she need beets. Why you get basket of radishes? Those not beets. Go back to market. Get radish. Get uh, beets. That's uh, that's some good babush king. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mother a shawl for her last birthday. It was like a hand, handmade Indian woven shawl. It was very beautiful. But she opened it and she's just like, oh, thank you so much for the shawl. And then she like paused for a second and she's like, oh, I'm old now, aren't I? A drifter, yes, it was the one that I knocked off, but when an enemy goes into a pit like that, it's supposed to give you the gym automatically. Oh. Supposed to. Yeah, supposed to. And as we've seen before, and as we clearly know, this game is programmed perfectly. Nothing yeah. can go wrong. <laughs> I can't possibly get in. Oh no, I'm getting uh, Boba Fett Ow. vibes. Ouch. Not enough iframes. Like, no iframes. You've just been rhinocerized. That's a good word. <laughs> Dinosaur with guns? It happens. Dinosaur are now in the wild, wild west. <laughs> there. Hmm. Right. Now you're the one right now, right now, sir, right. That gives us 702 out of 700. How did that happen? <laughs> you broke the game, Rick. That's when you give 110%. Adventure. Name is Bjorken. Bjorken? Lorkin. Lorkin Snorkin. <laughs> bork, bork! Bork, bork, bork! Mm -mm. I want to draw a little village grandma west now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to draw a uh, big muscle hyena 
Kari. Car uh, Carrie. Walking, walking little Grandma West across the street, like holding her <laughs> arm, and they're walking all across the crosswalk together. <laughs> They're like, oh, thank you. You're such a strong, kind man. <laughs> God. Yes, we're doing this now. Nice. Superman 64 time. <laughs> Excuse me. Two, one, woo! Point three seconds on the clock. Nice. Ooh. I thought that said Sabrina for a second there. I threw all the green checkpoints in order to use the red dots to guide your way. <laughs> Sabrina, the teenage dragon. I don't know exactly what music is playing right now in the background, but I can only hear uh, Mute City in the back of my head. <laughs> Mute City? I was listening to 80s hits during the stream, and I'm kind of still doing that. Imagine that, right? Mm -hmm. Um... Oh boy, Federick says, now the races are the harder part. And if Federick is saying it's hard... Yikes. <laughs> this isn't actually a race, it's just... It's a time trial, yeah. Is there no start over option?
You don't get anything for second place, huh? You got a last sense of satisfaction. We didn't. <laughs> well, fine. <laughs> you got nothing. All right. Who's interested in the new Pee League tomorrow? What? Pee Wee League. So. Oh. Sorry. Uh, not right now. <laughs> the other new league releases in 14 hours. Mm. I'm playing Dying Light right now, and Apex Legends is getting a new hero. I don't know if I'm going to play it. Wait, isn't Dying Light 2 coming out is out something? Was that? Oh yes, Dying Light Two. Yes, they're drastic pre-orders. Personally, uh, comes out tomorrow. Okay. Dying Light uh, is pretty cool, but I don't think I'm going to buy the sequel. Just mostly focused on seeing what was the hype back then, and it's it's basically Dead Island, but much much better. Not gonna lie, it was it it is pretty good. Uh, what they talked about with the game, the movement. Uh, the freedom and mm -hmm. climbing buildings in that game is amazing. The parkour, as they call it, was the main attraction. People said, even again, the grappling hook in that game is a, not something fun because you don't. You, then you lose the ability to climb buildings. You just grapple across like Spider Man. Yeah. Oh. In order to get the last eggs, I would have to do all of the flying levels, which I don't want to do. That's fair. Okay. It's boring. It's incredibly boring. 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 10% Rick, we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Eric says, well, you could go look at the bonus level. No, I can't. I think he means like on YouTube or something. Why would he mean on YouTube? Mm -hmm. No, go into it. What do you mean go into it? I don't think you don't have it unlocked until you have 149 eggs, right? Yeah. Uh I do not have enough eggs or gems to go into it. Yeah, you need 100%. You need 149 eggs and 15,000 gems. It says it has multiple gates, and you may not need everything to get through some of them. 149 eggs, 15,000 yeah. gems. I cannot go in. That's, uh, negatory. Fedrick's like, so speedways? We could speedways, or we could not. Yeah, we could not. <laughs> <laughs> That's always an option. 
That's why I thought he was saying go look it up on YouTube because it's just like clearly you don't want to do the speed speedways, so your best option then would be to look at it outside the game. Think outside the box. Yeah. Don't confine yourself to some Toys for Bob designer's box. The only limits are in your level. mind. <laughs> That's just your mind, man. Away. <laughs> Free yourself from the chains of preconceived notions and, and soar like the eagles or the dragons. Eh, that's probably what looks himself. Yay. Yeah. He's a kitty. He is a kitty. Dragon kitty. We call it the, race, the races are annoying. That's why oh. I'm not doing it. Huh. Oh. Not sure why anybody would want to watch me do that. <laughs> they aren't even interesting to look at. Right then. Uh. Okay. Uh. Uh, uh, says, though I mostly uh, just remember the speedways in the first game being terrible, so I don't know. They were terrible. They were awful. <laughs> they put me off mm. of wanting to do any of them at all. Mm. Yeah, I do all not enjoy speedways. doing them at all. Any of them in any of the games. They should not be have been required at all. All right. <laughs> 